Okay, we're back here live in Las Vegas, Nevada. This is theCUBE here at HP Discover for three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. This is theCUBE, our flagship program, where we go out to the, the events, extract the signal from the noise, and we're going to get all the action here at HP. Talk to the top executives, talk to entrepreneurs, customers, whoever we can find these extract the signal from the noise, and uh, we'll go where the action is. We'll go for an interview on the floor, but ultimately theCUBE is about bringing in all the, the top uh, signal and sharing that, and also the execs as well. My co-host is Jeff Frick uh, from SiliconANGLE. Our next guest is Antonio Neri, who's the General Manager of Technology Services. You know, really one of the most uh, important areas right now, the demand is so hot for that bridge to the cloud, that bridge to big data. Antonio, welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you, thank you for having me here. So you know, it's, it's always not talked about in terms of the sexiness of the flashy launches, and you had the flash, you know, launch, you know, pun intended, you know, with the three part, very bar, successful, yeah. hundred million dollar acquisition company in revenue now up over a billion with uh, Donatelli. But right now the big demand is for, is for education. Best practices, use cases, reference architectures. OpenStack has got so much activity around the enterprise because it just, it, it's a, you know, a custom supporting cloud. Big data continues to <laughs> make the headlines every yep. day. So I want to get the update from you because you have to hear from customers. You're putting big plans in front of them on the consulting and support side. So what is the update? What are the, what's the hot trends in your world and what are you announcing and talking about here at HP Discover? Sure, well, first of all, thank you for having me here today. Uh, we're actually very excited because uh, this is kind of the premier event for us and that's where we take the time to uh, to go back to the customers and with a set of offers and uh, value propositions that are unique for to meet their business needs. And like you said, I mean, Converge Cloud, the journey to the cloud, big data is two big themes that customers are having a big challenge. And so from the technology's perspective, from technology service perspective, we're actually ma making a big introduction today of new professional and support services around Converge Cloud and big data. First on the big data, we're actually announcing a new set of services around advisory services, which may basically are workshop-based type of solutions where we bring the customer in an environment using our own intellectual property and help them articulate you know, the problems, the value proposition, and their objectives around big data. The second service we also announced today is all around the strategy. Once we have that output, how we take those uh, outputs and we translate them into strategy to implement big data practices in the company. And obviously from there we help them with the implementation and the operations management of that. So What does that cause? That, is that a program just called strategy with some plan on that? Well is actually that... it's, it's four big services, you know, advisory, strategy, design, and implementation services all around big data. And obviously Hadoop is a big component of that. And, uh, and we are very excited because we see a lot of demand for those type of services. Now, we already had uh, services around uh, vertical and autonomy for big, you know, structure and structural data, but now we really complement the entire portfolio. And then the other aspect is Converge Cloud, and uh, we, we believe it's going to be a hybrid model, and uh, every customer is going to follow a different path to the cloud. And again, in the same context, right, how we advise them how we help them with the strategy of that journey to the cloud, how we help them design the right hybrid model, and ultimately how we make them support. And a big component of the announcement today is data center care for cloud, which means that uh, in a four-wall agreement now, we can actually guarantee uh, bursting capabilities outside, maintaining the same service level, So, which is a big headache for customers. Once they start uh, translating you know, workloads out of the premise, outside into public environments, HP Cloud or Service or whatever other provider they, they are thinking, how they maintain the same experience at the same service level. So very excited about today and uh, we know customers are they're wanting those services. Sure. So Antonio, talk a little bit about what's the scale of that effort on the front end when people they know they want to get involved in, in, right. in, in the cloud and they want to get involved in big data. They're not quite sure where to start. Right. What what's kind of the baby step or how do you get them through that process that you described into their first project right. and even delivering on right. a project? And that's a very good question, Jeff, because many customers are kind of intimidated, you know, but if you think about an advisory workshop, normally it's a one to two day workshop. One to two days, okay. One to two shop, and we bring, you know, between three, four uh, consultants from our side um, with a very structured approach and uh, our software IP, so that we walk them through a methodology so they, they can do baby steps, very contained type of engagements 
and then you know make them comfortable about the next step. Okay. So they don't feel they have to swallow you know a big you know giant whale, but really small baby steps to get to where they want to be. Yeah. So it starts very small. Right. You know, and once it's done correctly, you know the engagement start growing, and at the end you know that's when you have the change management on all, all, all articulated. Right. And on the on the client side, what? What business units or what groups or what are some of the, the business problems that they see or a great opportunity to tackle this well, to I get think started? I, yeah, I think, you know, um, it's all about change management. That's the biggest concern, right? So obviously <laughs> you need the IT you know, components of that. Uh, you need the business owners to be part of the conversation. But at the end, it's going to come down all about change management. How are we going to get to the steps they need to go through in a change management approach so that they feel they are always in control. Right. They really get very uncomfortable when they are they feel they are losing control. Right. So we our job is to make sure they feel they're always in control with at their pace and with peace of mind they're gonna get what they need to get. And is the change management driving the shift in the technology Eventually, or, right. or is exactly. the cloud driving it and you know I to implement this you have to put in some I think it can go either way but okay. the reality is that the technology shift are driving the biggest change. Okay. And obviously, you know, we embedded Converge infrastructure. We are at the forefront of the Converge Cloud with one common architecture. Um, applications and workload are going to be the other big shift. And but at the end, you know, customers need help, and they need a partner they can trust and they can walk them through that journey at the pace that they that they need. Yeah. Great. What is the uh, change that you've seen in, in the Converge Cloud? Obviously, there's been so much talked about about Amazon, and um, We've used some <laughs> other metaphors, but I won't say it here on theCUBE, but you know, they're really marching hard to the enterprise. They've done such an amazing job of commoditizing, although Dave Donatelli denied commoditization of storage, but you know, I understand his, his response, but you know, Amazon's commoditizing the infrastructure as a service and establishing a platform in an innovative way. So you have commoditization and innovation. Everyone is waking up to that. OpenStack has got massive traction. But yet customers are like, hey, I need ANSI compatibility. I need, I'm running Red Hat. I got right. things going on there. So how is that environment, that dynamic of I need cloud, and how has that changed your offering in the past, yeah. say, 12 months? I don't, I don't say that people need cloud. What they need is flexibility uh, where cloud can play a big role. It's a different approach. Maybe right? they want the cloud economics, maybe. Yeah, maybe they want the cloud <laughs> economics, right? But, but at the end of the day, it's all about you know, productivity, cost, and, uh, and flexibility, right? And I think the cloud is going to create an environment where those, those are big things are going to stay in play. Now, Amazon obviously has been in the forefront trying to create an environment, but they don't have the technology expertise we have. And ultimately, it's a hybrid model. Yeah. And like I said, the hybrid model is going to stay here for a while, and I think it's the long-term solution, where basically our know, customers are going to have workloads in on-premise with the field control, and they are going to. You know, well, Amazon load. has some decent tech with their mission, and the Elastic Cloud has in el has Elastic SLAs, right? So right. you know the feedback, and this is legit on Amazon. This is not, I'm not really trashing Amazon. It's been publicly talked about. Is that inconsistent performance? You see yeah. great benchmarks on one hand, and it's very lumpy. You mentioned experiences and service level. I think payments. I call it best effort. <laughs> <laughs> Called lumpy, but you know, but developers love that because it's it, they're not that sensitive right, to that. Exactly. You mentioned earlier the guarantee the bursting, the data center care. Are you guaranteeing experiences and SLAs? Because right. that's a little bit different. You got privacy, security issues. Right. So can you is that something? How do you, how do you have those conversations in the enterprise? So well, first of all, we always tie it to the, to the premise of the HP cloud architecture, which is one architecture, one vendor and you can move up and down from a private to a managed to a public cloud in a consistent way. So doing it that way gives you a lot of more room and flexibility. Now from the data center care perspective, what we do is basically, we have a four wall agreement where we support everything is in a four wall agreement and we also do flexible capacity service, which is one of the announcements we made today, where if you want to burst on what's premise. It, what's it called, flexible what? Flexible capacity services which is a utility-based model, right? Infrastructure as a service, if you want to call it that way, but it's on-premise. So you don't need to burst outside your private, private environment. You can have it on-premise, same technology, but instead of being a CapEx model, it's an OpEx model, and we actually manage that as a service, as a part of the data center care agreement. So you take the OpEx of the cloud, off-premise, right. and you basically 
go internal with it. Internal. And so exactly. there's no capex to get all the exactly. expenses. So our customer well, says, good. you know, that's interesting. I have these That's spikes. good economics. Yeah, exactly. Because at the end, you know, I'm still not comfortable to burst outside my my four walls. I want to have it on premise, but I don't want to invest this massive amount of dollars to have this low utilization. So what we do as a part of data center care, we, we actually provide that capacity on a utility base for the spikes when they need it and then just engage HP as a utility based model. And then obviously if they have workloads that are still very comfortable to, uh, to kind of uh, take offside the walls, we actually have that relationship and we will manage those service levels whether on on premise or off the wall. So we give them a lot of flexibility, whether it's four wall agreement on premise, flexible capacity on demand on premise and outside in one. So how how's the how's the uptake been on that? So I mean is that a new service? Is that a new service or is that flexible capacity is actually has been for a while and we see massive demand because customers understand the economics of using yeah, and they know, understand on prem. <laughs> it's on premise and they feel more more comfortable with. Data center as a standalone has been a massive success. Yeah. And uh, we have hundreds of customers that have signed up deals with well, us. I, I certainly, if the moonshot stuff gets the lowest, the footprint density op option is going to be continue to be yeah. good. I got to ask you about another important area that we've been covering pretty heavily on SiliconANGLE and Wikibon, and that is data management. Mm -hmm. um, Donatelli was quoted, I put a Forbes, up, Forbes post earlier, mm -hmm. and then um, he talked here. Storage conversations evolving from you know speeds and feeds, how many platters to flash, media to solutions, and with software-led infrastructure and software-defined storage, the conversation is about solutions and business value, right? right. So, data management is a big deal. The right. protection, um, you know, data, data backup. Migration. To, I got to move data around. Correct. So, you know, today NetApp uh, launched Clustered on Tap. Their new upgrade, mainly to, to handle the data portability issues. So, you, people want to move data. Uh, it's hard. Right. So how do you take us through the conversations that you're having with customers around data? Well, you know, we data management and yeah. all the data issues. So we actually have introduced already a while back a, a set of services around data migration, backup and recovery architecture, and compliance issues. So our consultant team actually, together with our three-part specialist, are having a holistic conversation with our clients. So if you decide to basically take advantage of all the technology benefits of 3PAR and implement that architecture, which is the architecture for the future. We, are, we our consulting team actually helps with that journey, so we can help them architect, design, and implement that 3PAR into their environment. And then we also provide what we call the data migration services so that the customers doesn't need to go through the hustle of moving the data from the old legacy to the new legacy. So we provide a complete solution with that. We also help them understand the compliant risks associated with data, uh, storing, and uh, archiving. And so our consultants can look at the uh, how they're doing it today, and what's the best way to do it uh, in the context of risk management and compliance. And then also, obviously, leverage our, our store one's products uh, and store serve products, right? So uh, store all products in terms of store ones for backup and store all for uh, for uh, archiving. So we think we provide a complete stack between technology and services, and obviously all the support that goes with it once it's fully implemented. And, uh, and the customers really like that because they have one partner who can do it all from the technology implementation all the way to the maintenance of the architecture. So on the, um, on the big data side, what is the most pressing applications that you're hearing for discussions? Analytics obviously is a category. Right. Is that an app, is that something, or is yeah. it just the I think one? Hadoop's implementations are big, right? I mean, POCs or production? Production, actually, and uh, that's why one of the services we introduced today is what we call the uh, reference architectures. Since we have done now many of them, uh, what we can provide our clients is a set of catalog uh, reference architectures so that we can show them and actually implement quickly if one of those referring architectures meet their needs. So it is, we are spinning up the implementation. And the other one is training and education uh, for system and administrators. Um, you know, a lot of the system and administrators need to understand how to manage those Hadoop implementations. And so we provide training to system and administrators on how to go implement and manage those once they are already running. So it's all about more, it's not anymore POCs, it's more about implementing in production and running it, where you know big unstructured data, right? They're still more strategizing around it and what it means for them. 
but Hadoop obviously is a big uh, is a big component. So how's the international business now? Obviously, we hear a lot about global global economy, and you got different challenges on the data. I see different countries like Germany. Um, is that anything new there to change updates at all? Any well, I mean, Europe is uh, is still a challenge, right? I think about it, you know the unemployment rates, you know the situation in the southern parts, uh, the slowdown of the mature economies, and uh, you know, but everybody's having the same problem, right? Yeah. So it, it, it is an interesting time for for Europe. I think the United States is probably, you know, in in a phase of recovery. We'll see, right? In the are you are you following time. any of the NSA Prism story? I have read it, and I actually last night uh, when I went back to my room, I, I heard the stories about the the the, the, the person that uh, shared the story, right? And you know that's that brings another topic, right? Security how security is managed in the IT environment. Contractors. And contractors and how things are done. I mean, we talk about, we have been talking about security for some time. Yeah. Bill Vecti, Meg, had talked about security, right? Yeah. And what it means. And and, and obviously, it's, it's a big Yeah, concern. and you guys have a big federal group within right. HP, so you Correct. know there's a lot of CIOs and a lot of pockets of federal activity, not just within the NSA. Right. Um, very sensitive information. Very sensitive information. 29-year-old kid, right. whistleblower, that's what they're calling yeah. him. Yeah, you know, well, some are I saying mean, traitor. Some are saying so. It's like a really weird uh, story. You know, it's like. But I think know. at the core goes back to kind of you know how you manage your IT and uh, and what's your strategy around it. Obviously, we don't comment on what individuals will do, but I think it goes back yeah. to how we we drive the strategy in, in making yeah. our, our data secure and locked at the right level. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, human humans are always the bottleneck yeah. and always some the problems and the security failure. Uh, but tech can help. Um, Antonio, thank you for coming on theCUBE. Really Absolutely. appreciate it. I love the uh, the new the new data center care uh, product and obviously the stuff that you've been perfecting. Um, CapEx is not something people want. They want OpEx, they want the economics, they want the capabilities on-prem. It's a very interesting service. Uh, we're here at HP Discover. Antonio Neri, uh, Senior Vice President, General Manager of Technology Services here at HP. HP Discover, Las Vegas, theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, Jeff Frick. Stay tuned, we have more guests coming right after this short break. Thank you.